Hello, my name is Julia Blythe, and I live in Northfield, Massachusetts. I first heard about Kinder Morgan's Northeast Energy Direct Pipeline um, in February of 2014, and at the time I didn't even know that it was going through my town. Um, but I was already worried about it because um, basically I think that it's a bad idea to keep increasing fossil fuel infrastructure when we should be instead increasing our reliance on renewable energy. Um, I started studying this pipeline and the effects it would have on the natural world around that time, February 2014. And I was also concerned about the construction impacts on the land. They'd have to clear a lot of trees and then dig this huge trench. Um, so I was already starting to study this pipeline and then in December they changed the route um, and put it through more of my town and also added a huge compressor station. And so I started learning about compressor stations as well. And what I want to show you today is some of what I've learned about this particular pipeline and the compressor stations they would be installing. Um, so I have some slides that I'm going to show you. And to start off, I just want to show you a photograph of how large the pipe is um, while they're installing it. And then also, um, this pipe would be installed by the Tennessee Gas Pipeline Company, which is a subsidiary of Kinder Morgan. Um, the company is huge. They own about 80,000 miles of pipeline across the United States. Um, they would be getting the gas from the Marcellus Shale Fields in Pennsylvania and shipping it through New York into Massachusetts and now up through New Hampshire and back to Drake at Massachusetts where it would reach a hub and then likely they would um, pipe it up north through Maine and into Canada to export. Um, this particular pipeline is proposed to be 36 inches in diameter. It would be buried about three feet underground and be at a pressure of 1460 PSI, which is very high pressure. Um, this next slide is a picture of a pipeline across my family's land in southern Ohio. Um, and this pipeline, like that one, would have a 50-foot permanent easement. Um, they would clear about 100 feet of trees for construction and then let it grow in on the edges. And what we've experienced in Ohio is that uh, a lot of what grows in on the edges is non-native and invasive shrubs um, because the land has been disturbed. Um, it, within the 50 feet, you won't be allowed to plant any trees or build structures of any kind or a pool or a shed or anything like that. Um, also, they monitor the pipeline easement by helicopter once a week, and then they come through either on foot or with a mower every three years, in some cases every year, um, but we're not sure what this one will be like. Um, in addition to the pipeline and easement, there are some above ground facilities. And these include metering stations where um, they sort of measure how much gas goes through, um, and those are usually at junctions with laterals. Um, also, pigging stations, and a pig is like a big electronic squeegee that pushes through um, and gathers up any liquid condensate and um, takes it out to an, another station where they can remove that. So it's sort of a, a cleaning and also inspecting of the pipe. And they do that, well, I'm not exactly sure, but they have to do it every seven years by federal law, and it may be more frequently. There's also a photograph here of a pipe yard, where, which is where they stack all the pipe um, while they're constructing. And they haven't told us anything about where those might be, but we know that it uses up a lot of land that would have to be cleared um, for them to store the pipes. And last, I'm going to talk about compressor stations next. <clears throat> so a compressor station um, is basically a, a bunch of engines um, and turbines that are used to compress the gas and move it through the pipelines towards the markets. Um, so they sometimes do this through dehydration. And I'm going to show you a video that was um, made by a group in Texas that's working um, against a pipeline there. And they start off showing a little film put together by 
um, a pipeline company. Newly produced natural gas flows from the wellhead through pipelines that lead to a compressor station before proceeding on to local and distant markets. At the station, water vapor is removed to improve quality and create the higher pressure needed for longer distance transport from here. Compressor stations function much like electrical substations, water storage tanks, and transmission towers. Chesapeake's compressor stations are safe, fenced, and often we encase them in sound walls or buildings to contain the noise. Compressor stations can be an unobtrusive part of the urban landscape, like this one just north of downtown Fort Worth, where it quietly coexists with a nearby hotel and restaurant. Boy, don't compressor stations look swell when they're new and filmed in bright sunlight with a warm, friendly actor explaining how great they are? Well, in reality, they look like this. In these infrared videos, a very expensive camera sees what the human eye cannot. Whenever you sweep an area to look for a gas leak, you could be two foot from it and miss it. So in other words, if you were going to do some welding in that area, in a plant, and you go out and you sweep the area, and you were two foot from actually where the plume was, then all of a sudden you've got gas in the air, you don't know it. So if you're cutting, welding, or whatever you're doing, something you know that might shoot some sparks out, if it gets outside of where you swell, well, then you could have a potential fire out there and injuries. Compressor stations are prone to leaks, and harmful volatile organic compounds are merely vented into the atmosphere. Health issues are becoming more evident in the older gas fields. In some cases, children and adults living and working near gas well and processing sites suffer from nosebleeds and endocrine disruption. When the symptoms show, it's too late. Natural gas can condense into liquid form within the pipeline. This liquid may contain benzene, toluene, xylene, mercury, chromium-6, and radium-226. The condensate may additionally contain PCB-contaminated lubricants that entered the pipeline and are removed at the site. Compressor stations run 24 hours a day and introduce noise levels to the environment regardless of how they are powered. Studies show that low frequency vibrations can cause vibroacoustic disease which causes increased irritability, aggressiveness, a tendency for isolation and decreased cognitive skills. Sometimes explosions occur at compressor stations and along the pipeline because of human error and natural disasters. The results are devastating. Developing now a natural gas explosion in the northern part of Texas. We're hovering about three quarters of a mile away from this fire, and the heat is incredible up here in the cockpit. The explosion was so big, the chaos was so bad, the numbers all afternoon were across the board. The only person missing is the person who was actually driving that heavy equipment. It was a 36 inch pipe with high pressure natural gas. That's a telling picture right there. Um, along this project, there are eight new compressor stations proposed. Um, one is sited in Northfield, Massachusetts, another in Windsor, Massachusetts, um, another in Greenville or New Ipswich, New Hampshire, and more in Dracut and um, along the way in New York. And I think none of them, they have proposed sites that are about four miles long. Um, but not, they haven't identified parcels to place them in yet. Um, in Northfield and a few other places, they've proposed 80,000 horsepower compressor stations, which are really huge. Um, these have about 
three turbines each, which is pretty unusual. A lot of the 20,000 horsepower compressor stations in other places have six turbines each. So these turbines are really, really enormous. Um, and there's a lot we don't know about them because they haven't been used very much yet. This is a graph from 2006 showing the sizes of compressor stations throughout the United States. And as you can see, almost all of them are less than uh, 40,000 horsepower, and even a larger percentage are less than 20,000 horsepower. So what they've proposed here for Northfield and Windsor um, is incredibly large. And originally, when they first submitted a proposal, they were planning to put a 120,000 horsepower compressor station in Deerfield, Massachusetts. And that size is absolutely unheard of, at least in 2006. But even now, I haven't been able to find a picture of one that's even 80,000 horsepower. Um, this next slide is taken from a presentation that Kinder Morgan gave to the Northfield Select Board in uh, August of 2014. And as you can see, they've shown um, compressor stations that are 2,000 horsepower, which is 40 times smaller than what they're proposing for our town, um, which doesn't seem very honest to the Northfield Select Board. They have also showed some valve stations with pipes that are probably about six inches in diameter compared to what's proposed 36 inches. Um, in their resource reports, Kinder Morgan says that they'll need 10 acres for operation and 20 acres for construction of a compressor station. Um, however, in their first resource report, the one where they were talking about putting a compressor in Deerfield, they said they were looking for 50 to 75 acres of land. So we're not really sure what they're actually looking for. Um, but in some other places, these photographs are from Pennsylvania. Um, they're often cited on 60 or more acres of land. Some of that would be forested to help absorb the sound. Um, so you can look at several pictures here. Um, these photographs were, aerial photographs were taken by Vera Scroggins, who is an activist in Pennsylvania. Um, next, I want to show you a short video um, taken by a man who lives in New York, I believe, um, showing the noise and light pollution in his backyard after a compressor station was installed uh, on the neighboring Looking parcel. at a natural gas compressor site that uh, is making um, a constant sound for me, day and night, 24-7. Um, there are currently five uh, rather large compressors over there. Uh, each has a fan about, uh, about 10 foot in diameter and an engine um, the size of a locomotive. And that's, like I said, that's each, each compressor. Uh, right now there are only, I believe, three fans running of the five. Um, uh, right now, I can tell you that the sound is uh, penetrates my house. I lay in bed, I hear it. I go in my uh, kids' rooms, I hear it. I go in my living room, I hear it. The only place I don't hear it is in the basement. Um, but it's 24-7, and it just keeps getting worse and worse. Um, so not only do I have sort of sound pollution, as you can see, I have a pretty intense light pollution. Um, you know, it's... Nothing good about this site, I can tell you, living next to it. Um, but like I said, they, they refused to do anything, so I had to, uh, you know, file suit. Um, and the standard is, you know, what a normal person can tolerate. Um, you know, that's what constitutes, a, or, or what a normal person can't tolerate constitutes a nuisance. And I can't imagine that any normal person um, would tolerate hearing inside their house this noise. Um, and not only that, like I said, I can't go, there's no spot in my yard that I can go and not hear this, uh, you know, monstrosity behind me. You know, you hear all the good things about natural gas, but you don't hear much about this. Um, you know, they're going to, 
you know. And they don't care. They really don't care. It's all about money and, you know, getting the gas out and, you know, they'll talk real sweet to you and tell you, oh, we'll do all that we can. And, you know, they, they've said a million times, we want to be good neighbors. And I can tell you that that was uh, nothing but a bunch of BS and lies. Um, and next, uh, this is a, another video of a blowdown, which is an event where um, the pipeline company intentionally vents gas to release pressure. And so um, they sometimes do this at compressor stations so that they can start a turbine. So they would briefly release a lot of pressure, then the motor would be able to start up um, and then it would resume normal operating. Um, other times when they're going to work on the pipe, they might blow down miles and miles of pipe, releasing all of that natural gas into the air. And these could last up to two hours. Um, we don't really know how frequently this occurs. It might be um, as many as a few times a month or maybe a few times a year or maybe not, not even once a year. Um, different pl people who live near pipelines in different states report uh, different frequencies of blowdowns. So we don't know what might occur here. But you can listen, it's quite loud. This particular example is a 36 inch pipe down, uh, excuse me, a 36 inch pipe blowing down from 950 PSI and they're releasing 10,000 feet of pipe, um, the gas from all that pipe. Um, next I have a short film of an explosion at a compressor station. These sites are fully automated. So there may or may not be staff present, um, but there's a control room in Texas that monitors the pressure and would shut everything down if it suddenly releases a lot of pressure. Um, but in the case of an explosion, um, they would have to just let the gas burn off. There's nothing that first responders can do except evacuate the area and um, set up um, a, a control room. Um, these explosions do occur almost weekly on transmission pipelines across the United States. Um, and for more information, check out massplan.org, nofratgasinmass.org or newhampshirepipelineawareness.org. And I also ask that you comment on the FERC docket. Um, the number is PF1422. Um, and you can make a comment stating your opposition with details or just that you think it's a bad idea. Um, thanks, and I do want to leave you with a few more pictures of places that would be affected in Northfield. Um, and so these are all sites right along the route um, most of them with, would be within earshot of the compressor station if they cite it um, where we expect them to. Um, and all of them would have trees cut in order to put um, the pipeline through. So thank you for watching.